Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is an intumescent cataract with posterior sinecure. Let us see how we can manage this case. This is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus with a 2.8 millimeter keratome. This is a paracentesis on the right side of the main incision, about 3 clock hours away. And this is another side port on the left side of the main incision, about 2 and a half clock hours away. And now I'm going to inject an air bubble and beneath this air bubble I'm injecting tripan blue dye in the posterior chamber through this small opening. This posterior sinecure all around except at this place at 9 o'clock. So I have injected dye in the posterior chamber the dye is coming out gradually through that small opening and now the dye is washed out and then 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected into the anterior chamber and now I take a 23G Simco and break the sinecure in this way you can use any blunt instrument to break the sinecure. And now hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected again. And now I am going to use a people expansion device but before that I am going to cut the fibrous band in this way by doing micro sphincterotomies at two three places the fibrous band is cut at three places now I go through the right side port the side port is small and I'm finding it difficult to maneuver this still I could manage and now I'm going to incise the fibrous band here and now the B hex people expansion device is being used with the help of a B hex forceps the device is taken completely into the anterior chamber and the leading flange is stuck. Then the flange at 1 o'clock is stuck. Alter alternate flanges are tucked to dilate the people. Now going through the left side port, the flange at 10 o'clock is tucked under the iris and the pupil has taken this hexagonal shape and you can see that the capsule has stained all around because I injected dye in the posterior chamber. Now see what happens. As soon as I in incise the anterior capsule there is leakage of turbid fluid. Indicates high intralenticular pressure and in such cases I always do a small rexis first, aspirate some cortical matter and decompress the capsular bag. As soon as we aspirate some cortical lens matter, the intralenticular pressure decreases drastically. Yes. And there is some dye under the iris that is also coming out occasionally going through the right side port and removing some more cortex from 2 o'clock and 1 o'clock yes going through the left and removing some cortex from 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock and now the 
bag is decompressed nicely. The intralenticular pressure has decreased significantly. Visco is injected and now I'm going to take a vana scissor and make a nick at the margin of the pupil at around 7 o'clock and see what happens. The flap is directed towards 10 o'clock. So we have to move this flap clockwise. Come to 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, go clockwise and complete the rexes. Usually I go anti-clockwise but in this case we cannot go anti-clockwise because the flap was directed in that way. And now Visco is injected again and the FICO handpiece is introduced before that the nucleus is mobilized. The machine being used is Oatly Catrix 3 and here goes the easy tip. Bevel is down, some cortical matter is removed and now turn the handpiece, bevel is off, bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus and chop the nucleus. This is a soft nucleus and it is brittle so it is getting chopped very easily. There is no leathery fiber in this case. Yes. This is a big fragment it is emulsified and removed. And now this is the hemineucleus. It is tilted and divided into some pieces. Each piece is emulsified and removed. Fico power used in this case is 45%. Flow rate is 40 ml per minute and vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury. Now I inject some visco and cortical cleanup is to be done. I'm going through the right side port and removing the cortex from the superior aspect first. Yes, the cortex is coming very nicely with the help of this Simcoe cannula. This is a 23G Simcoe cannula. 25G Simcoe cannula is also available nowadays and I am going to use it shortly. So the cortex is cleaned very nicely. Visco is injected and a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens is being implanted in the capsular bag. Yes, the lens has gone into the capsular bag. The lens is dialed in such a way that the haptics are about 90 degree away from the main incision. The reason is we can go behind the eye well for cleaning the visco. Now see removal of BHEX. Just untuck all the flanges and pull it out. No injector system is required for this device. And now the visco is thoroughly removed, the antechamber is irrigated and now I go behind the eye well and irrigate the capsular bag 
very nicely so that all the visco that is in the capsular bag comes out. Now I use irrigation and aspiration together to remove last bit of visco. This is an evatic cataract to reduce post-op inflammation. I injected air bubble and then little bit of tramsinolone acetate to reduce any chance of post-op inflammation. I injected tramsinolone and washed out most of the tramsinolone. Still some particles will remain and this will reduce any chance of post-op inflammation. And now the anterior chamber is nicely formed. The IOP is kept on the higher side and the case is concluded. So we started our journey from here almost 360 degree posterior synechia and we have reached to this point. This is the beauty of surgery. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will inspire you to take off challenging cases, improve your surgical skills to great heights, serve the mankind with lot of love, respect, compassion, empathy and great surgical competence.